The Reavers take their show on the road. And did they show them? What a show at Lewis Central. The Titans and Falcons give the fans their money's worth. The cost of victory at CB Stadium? The Yellow Jackets and Rams pay the price. Paying the price now so it pays off later. Hey, it's time to pay up. The Bluff Sports Zone starts right now. Hello, I'm JJ Davis and welcome to another edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. Now, here's my question. Why did the coaches in the Midwest Football Conference vote to play each other twice during the regular season? And for the record, the head reaver Scott Strohmeyer is the only coach to vote a big fat no. So why? Well, let me show you. As third ranked Iowa Western kicked off league play at Ellsworth. And here's IW TV student Aaron Zach. Road Game Coverage, brought to you by Ginny Edmondson Sports Medicine. Undefeated Iowa Western looking to improve its record to 3-0. The Reavers face Ellsworth Community College on a hot, muggy day. Early first quarter, action can be described in one word, defensive. Panthers give the reigning national champs all they could handle. Iowa Western's third possession, Akis Teague, breaks free for a 31-yard run, setting up the visiting team on the Ellsworth 10. Next play, Connor Brevard to Geronimo Allison. Reavers draw first blood, 7-0. First play of the second corner, former St. Albert star Jimmy Hawk blocks the punt. Marcus Montgomery recovers the ball. He goes all the way for a 50-yard scoring play. Iowa Western up 14-0. Still in the second, Teague again. Freshman star runs for 111 yards, slips through here for 33 to make it 21 zilch. As a friend of mine would say, he gone. Under two minutes left in the third, Brevard to former Lewis Central star Alex Reed. His only catch of the game, good 32 yards, giving the visiting team a 49 point lead. Iowa Western goes on to win big 61 to zero. Well, I felt uh, we started a little bit slow. Um, I don't know what it was, but prior to the game, I didn't know if we had the, the intensity that we needed. But uh, pleased that we kept, you know, the second half was a lot better. The first half, I was disappointed um, just in the way we played um, enthusiasm-wise, but um, pleased the second half. Well, we gotta we got to get healthy. You know, I, that's number one. You know, it's good to come out of here. We had four starters out today with injuries, and, uh, you know, we got to get healthy, number one. And hopefully for our guys, they realize that they got to come and play four quarters uh, regardless of the team. Allison, Geronimo leaps up and Gimo's got it. started going. First half, it came out a little flat, but uh, definitely got in track second half and uh, moved the ball and put up some points, so it was good. Four. Quick pass to Alex Reed. Reed slips one tackle. He's to the sideline. Gets past another tackle. Alex Reed down the sideline. Alex Reed is going to... The touchdown. We just had to keep grinding. I mean, we came out a little flat, uh, but give credit to them. They played hard, um, but we just had to come out and do Iowa West and Reaver football, and they showed on scoreboard. The reigning national champions stay undefeated. Iowa Western racks up over 600 yards of total offense. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Aaron Zach. Thanks, Aaron. Now, because of that round-robin format as voted on by the coaches, the Reavers will get to beat on the Panthers again. Sounds like a homecoming game to me. <laughs> Quarterback Connor Brevard, another serviceable game. Threw for over 200 yards and three touchdowns. And running back at Keys Teak, another 100-yard game. And how about Marcus Montgomery? Now, ex-St. Albert stud Jimmy Hawk blocks a punt. Montgomery returns it 50 yards for a score. He later picks one off and recovers an Ellsworth fumble. All in a day's work. And look at that defense. The Reavers' D side holds the Panthers to just 98 total yards of offense on 63 plays. And the home defense? Yeah, not so much. Ellsworth gives up 605 total yards. So another blowout for Iowa Western. And next stop, another road game. 
this time at the North Dakota State School of Science. And, uh, oh yeah, NDSCS knocked off Ellsworth to start the season. So, guess where this one's going? The going got tough at CB Stadium. Only who toughed it out? But first, Lewis Central, St. Albert. Need I say more? When we come back. At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. Jack Frost, you do have beautiful teeth. My, my what? Are they really as white as they say? Yes. <gasps> oh, they really do sparkle like freshly fallen snow. This is an excellent example of what teeth should look like. Check out the iridescence of that incisor. The beauty of that bicuspid. The magnificence of those molars. <laughs> and the best way to achieve such terrific teeth is brushing. Two minutes, twice a day. Not 30 seconds, not a minute, 45. Two minutes. That's all it takes. They're beautiful. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. What does the world have in store for you? It's all here. Iowa Western. The world is waiting. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone, brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family-owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. Last year it was all Lewis Central, but not this year. This one a lot closer and to the very end. As St. Albert, a score to settle. Same with LC. Heck, when these two do battle, it's always that way. And a lot of subplots in this one. I mean, the teams, the head coaches, and the fans. And that's just for starters. Here's IDUB TV student Austin Heinen. The big one. LC versus St. Albert. What more excitement do you need? Falcons look to avenge last year's route while the Titans try to defend home turf. Lewis Central gets first did. Mitchell Brinkman makes a catch to move the chains to the Titans' 32-yard line. Two plays later, quarterback Austin Simmons right up the middle busts a big one, bringing Lewis Central to the Falcons' 41. Simmons proving to be the dual threat that he is. Gonna go deep to Lincoln Rodenberg, makes the catch. 31-yard touchdown. 7-0 Titans. St. Albert gets the ball and faces third down early. Quarterback Tucker Colgett runs for the first. Hold on. Bumbo! Colgett scoops it up, though, to keep possession. Same drive. Visitors try to convert a fourth down. Colgett does just that. Falcons are on the move. St. Albert would finish the drive with a score tying it at seven at the end of one quarter. And how's this to start the second? Colgett runs it into the end zone. Falcons now with the lead 14 to seven. 
home team tries to get rolling again. Simmons, one of his 12 completions to Jake Rogers. Good for a first down. Next play, the junior quarterback goes deep again, looking to the end zone. Mine, says John Myring with the pick. Under five minutes to go in a half, LC's Caleb Shudek gets the carry, but Colgett takes it away. St. Albert with the ball at midfield. And first play, Colgett to Eric Johnson. G-O-N-E gone. Visitors now up 21 to seven with 314 left. But the Titans will not fold. Simmons goes long distance again and Rogers makes the grab for the 69 yard score. Halftime score is 21-14 Falcons. Game went scoreless in the third quarter, so heading straight to the fourth quarter. Here we go. Simmons has nothing open. Takes it himself to pick up another first down. Number 14 run for a team high 69 yards. Later in the drive, Simmons dialing it from long distance. Hello. Rogers for a second grab for a score. It's tied 21 all. Eight minutes left to go. St. Albert though responds quickly. Ryan Hansen bounces to the outside. And can you believe this? To the house, a 97 yard kick off return. 28, 21, St. Albert's favor. Next drive, LC keeps on fighting. Simmons, who threw for 328 yards to Kyle Larson. Yes! Man, oh man, who wrote the script of this game? Tied now at 28. Students loving every moment of it. Falcon then, with just over two minutes to go, Colgett, who ran for 175 yards, keeps it and picks up the first down in Lewis Central Territory. But the senior isn't done yet. Two plays later, out of my way. First and 10 Falcons in the red zone. Now, 9.5 seconds left. St. Albert third and goal on the one. Colgett, touchdown! Falcons win a wild one on the road, 35 to 28. They're a good football team, uh, and, and our kids didn't quit. Um, we made some plays to get us back in the game. Unfortunately, we made some plays to, uh, you know, that, that gave up some big uh, touchdowns to them. But uh, you know, we got that's a good football team. You know. You know, last year it's uh, it's in the past that we moved on. You know, and we decided that last year's 48 nothing, but it's a whole new season this year. We came out and just had to focus on doing our jobs as a team and relying on each other and really uh, coming out and showing what, what, what we're made of. So that was just a phenomenal high school football game. I mean, those teams just battled ebb and flow, ebb and flow. We tried to take away the deep ball. They completed the deep ball. They tried to slow us down with the run game. We ran the ball. I mean, it was just a, a battle of will. If you were to describe this team's effort in one word tonight, what would that one word be? We are SA. <laughs> For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Austin Heinen. Thanks, Austin. Now, both coaches will tell you that the game really did mean that much. I mean, it won't affect the outcome of their seasons. Now, that's true, but come on. Who's kidding who? The Lynx, not kidding at Harlan at least for the first two and a half quarters or so. AL drives 70 yards, five plays. Jared Thompson to Brandon Colpitts, touchdown. Abraham Lincoln trails the mighty Cyclones 14-13 in third, and then that was it. Senior QB Adam Jewell scores three on the ground, goes up top for two more, and combine that with four Lynx turnovers, and what do you get? 41-13 Harlan. As head coach Justin Camrad put it afterwards, you know, the first half we played great, and then the wheels fell off. Now AL's got to forget about it and move on. Next up, drum roll please, good old fashioned street fight with TJ. The Iowa Western women's soccer team fought their way to the final four last year. And what about 2013? But first, the Yellow Jackets started out okay, but then, next.
For more than a quarter century, thousands of athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sportsmen. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury, getting you back in the action. Jenny Ed Sports Med partners with Neb Ortho, giving you consistent one-on-one -on -one care from diagnosis to rehab. And since every injury an athlete is different, they've even developed a sports injury clinic specifically designed for athletes. Jenny Ed Sports Med. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself. But I didn't, because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Mom! Mom! What? You can't find Ichabod. What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning... 1 in 750,000. These fasten your seat belts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. The Rams bought the herd to Council Bluffs, and after exchanging pleasantries, it's time to go to work. As Thomas Jefferson kicked off a new beginning with a win in the morning. And the Yellow Jackets back at CB Stadium for their home opener, and against a team that TJ beat at their place in 2012. The Yellow Jackets leave the hive looking to sting the Rams. Now Glenwood fumbles it away on the second play. It's first of three in the first quarter. After a roughing the kicker, TJ takes over the Rams 34. Steven Ruby, a human pinball, 24 yards to the visitor 10. Third and goal, Wallace to Ja'Kai Gregory. Then the Jackets fourth down from the one. Steven Ruby slices it in. TJ's on the board, 9.06 first quarter. Glenwood ties it minutes later. The home team then fumbles it away. The Rams recover on the Yellow Jackets 28. Two plays later, Spencer Smith and number 25, a 33-yard touchdown run. Glenwood 14-7 under five minutes left in the first. TJ's next possession, Wallace to Ja'Kai Gregory and number nine, Corey Bertini, a big hit. Now both hurt on the play. Gregory leaves the game but does come back. And Bertini, the Rams' senior QB, does not. Second quarter, visitors, third and nine from the 39. Gage Shateva down the sidelines. Glenwood over 300 yards of total offense in the first half. Rogan Wedham takes the pitch and punches it in. 21-7 Rams, 9.59 in the second quarter. And the Jackets, three and out. Glenwood takes over on its own 45. Freshman quarterback Colton Wilwording hits Logan McCorkle for 10 yards and the first down. Spencer Smith, right side, 16 yards, another first down. First and goal from the eight, Spencer Smith reaches in, 28-7 under eight minutes left in the half. TJ, another three and out. The Rams march 54 yards. Spencer Smith, the last 40 right up the gut. His third TD of the night, 35-7 Glenwood, yeah, standing tall at the break. Now the visitors, 38 unanswered points in the last three, Third quarter, Brandon Bickle, a 47-yard field goal, wide right, and it's called good. 
The Yellow Jackets D holds the Rams just 57 yards in the second half. The offense comes to life. Jason Wallace to Ja'Kai Gregory. Early fourth quarter, Wallace to Jake Meyer. 10-yard scoring play, but too little too late. Glenwood takes it to Thomas Jefferson, 38-19, and thought they were ready. I thought they were, but like I said, uh, you know, some nights you look at them and you think they're ready and they're not. Uh, last week and uh, the week before, I didn't know about them and they came out pretty good. How would you rate your performance? I would say I did a decent job today. I mean, I made some mistakes, just like everyone else, but I still did my job on some plays, but there's some plays where I didn't. Feel like you guys took these guys for granted a little bit, maybe? Maybe a little bit, you know. I mean, uh, once you beat a team the previous year and then you come back the next year, you just kind of got that feeling like, oh, you know. But then that's what kind of um, killed us. I mean, it, it stings. It's, it's going to hurt. But we, our motto is it's one game a week, you know. You either go 1-0 and or 0-1. Oh this week we went 0-1. Oh and, and we're going to come back next week strong. I don't think it sucks being on that side on this side. Uh, yeah, this you know, that's a, that's a nice thing is uh, you lose one game. Uh, you don't lose your whole season. Uh, if you let things landslide like that, you're in for a long season. Everybody. Like I said in there, has got to do some soul searching. The Yellow Jackets drop to one and one. And next up, the big one. TJ tackles AL and throw the records out the window. Gonna be a fun one at CB Stadium, that's for sure. Happy days are here once again for the Reavers women's soccer team. On the other side. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Did you know that you're Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo stays with Luis and Maria. Oh, yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Oh, great! <laughs> you never know when your child will be too sick to go to school. So have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luis is the man because he's Elmo's plan. The man because he's Elmo's plan. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. What does the world need? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. They have yet to play a home match, but that hasn't stopped them from winning on the road. The third-ranked Iowa Western women's soccer team is at it again. The Reavers are 3-1. and one. Now, this is a different team for head coach Brad Silvey, but the goal is always the same. And speaking of goals... 
The Reavers won 19 games a year ago. Iowa Western scored 130 goals for an average of just under six per game. And this season? Well, for starters, head coach Brad Silby says his team has a lot more versatility and a lot more depth. We really focused on just purely recruiting talent. We didn't focus a lot on positions and, and, uh, and where they're located on a field. We just really looked for talent. Three talented all-region selections are back, including defending midfielder Paige Flores. It's taking us a little longer to get in the groove with things, but um, last year it kind of went all like we got real close real fast and we worked together well, but this year we're just kind of coming in with different personalities, so we had to kind of learn to work together better. We've got a lot more girls that go, go, go this year than we did last year, I think. And how does that pay off? Um, it's a lot easier to play with because we have more people stepping up and working hard rather than just having only a few people be the engines of the team. Up, up, everybody up! It'll be a similar style, but I don't think the goals will predominantly come from a certain person or a certain direction. It's going to be a lot more spread out. It's going to be a lot more of a balanced attack um, and maybe less predictable. I think we could be really good if we all click together. Why? Um, Do you feel like all the pieces are in place? Um, I don't feel like the pieces are in place yet, but once we do start to click, I feel like we could be really dangerous. I think they can go as far as they'd like to, Jay. Um, they, we, we really do. We have great talent. I think we are a deeper and more talented team from last year. It's just a matter of uh, if we can get it out of the girls at the right time of the season. Last season? NJCAA Final Four. The goal in 2013? Even better. Iowa Western paying the price in early September, hoping it pays off in mid-November. And then there's the guys. As the fourth rank Reavers, a sparkling 6-0. Just take no prisoners in their last two matches. Jordan Carver and the gang put on a clinic in Chicago, shut out South Suburban 7-0, and then blank DuPage 5 to zip. The Reavers have posted four shutouts in a row and have scored a total of 27 goals. Look out for Iowa Western. It's been that way every season since I've been here. Now, winning breeds winning. When a program is having success, that confidence, that attitude spreads. And soon before you know it, the entire culture is about winning. It becomes habit. And that's the feeling I get right now at Iowa Western. And that's it for me. For the latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and I'll see you around.